Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's talk is about the CMS proposed rule for fiscal year 2025 hospital inpatient prospective payment system and long-term care hospital prospective payment system. Let's get started. On April 10, 2024, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, issued the fiscal year 2025 Medicare Hospital Inpatient Prospective Payment System and Long-Term Care Hospital Prospective Payment System proposed rule. The proposed rule would update Medicare fee-for-service payment rates and policies for inpatient hospitals and long-term care hospitals for fiscal year 2025. CMS is publishing this proposed rule to meet the legal requirements to update Medicare payment policies for inpatient prospective payment system hospitals and long-term care hospitals on an annual basis. This fact sheet discusses major provisions of the proposed rule. Background on the inpatient prospective payment system and long-term care hospital prospective payment system. CMS pays acute care hospitals with a few exceptions specified in the law for inpatient stays under the inpatient prospective payment system. Long-term care hospitals are paid under the long-term care hospital prospective payment system. Under these two payment systems, CMS sets base payment rates prospectively for inpatient stays generally based on the patient's diagnosis, the services or treatment provided, and severity of illness. Subject to certain adjustments, a hospital receives a single payment for each case depending on the payment classification assigned at discharge. The classification systems are for inpatient prospective payment system, Medicare severity diagnosis related groups or MSDRGs, and for long-term care hospital prospective payment system, Medicare severity long-term care diagnosis related groups or MSLTC DRGs. The law requires CMS to update payment rates for inpatient prospective payment system hospitals annually and to account for changes in the prices of goods and services used by these hospitals in treating Medicare patients as well as for other factors. The index used to do this is known as the hospital market basket. The inpatient prospective payment system pays hospitals for services provided to Medicare beneficiaries using a national base payment rate adjusted for a number of factors that affect hospitals' costs, including the patient's condition and the cost of hospital labor in the hospital's geographic area. CMS updates long-term care hospitals' payment rates annually according to a separate market basket based on long-term care hospital specific goods and services. Changes to payment rates under inpatient prospective payment system. The proposed increase in operating payment rates for general acute care hospitals paid under the inpatient prospective payment system that successfully participate in the hospital inpatient quality reporting program and are meaningful electronic health record users is projected to be 2.6%. This reflects a projected fiscal year 2025 hospital market basket percentage increase of 3% reduced by a 0.4 percentage point productivity adjustment. Hospitals may be subject to other payment adjustments under the inpatient prospective payment system, including payment deductions for excess readmissions under the hospital readmissions deduction program, Payment deduction of 1% for the worst performing quartile of hospitals under the Hospital Acquired Condition Reduction Program. Upward or downward adjustments under the Hospital Value Based Purchasing Program. Overall, for fiscal year 2025, CMS expects the proposed changes in operating and capital inpatient prospective payment system payment rates, in addition to other changes, will generally increase hospital payments by $3.2 billion. Specifically, the proposed increase in operating and capital inpatient prospective payment system payment rates will increase hospital payments in fiscal year 2025 by approximately $2.9 billion. In addition, CMS projects 
Medicare uncompensated care payments to disproportionate share hospitals will increase in fiscal year 2025 by approximately $560 million, subject to determinations on applications for additional payments for inpatient cases involving new medical technologies following a review of public comments on the proposed rule, CMS also estimates that additional payments for inpatient cases involving new medical technologies will increase by approximately $94 million in fiscal year 2025, primarily driven by the continuation of new technology add-on payments for several technologies. Under current law, additional payments for Medicaid-dependent hospitals and the temporary change in payments for low-volume hospitals are set to expire December 31, 2024. In the past, these payments have been extended by legislation, but if they were to expire, CMS estimates that payments to these hospitals would decrease by $0.4 billion in fiscal year 2025. Changes to payment rates under long-term care hospital prospective payment system. For fiscal year 2025, CMS expects the long-term care hospital standard payment rate to increase by 2.8% and long-term care hospital prospective payment system payments for discharges paid the long-term care hospital standard payment rate to increase by approximately 1.2% or $26 million due primarily to a projected 1.3% decrease in high-cost outlier payments as a percentage of total long-term care hospital prospective payment system standard federal payment rate payments. CMS is seeking comment on the proposed methodology used to determine the long-term care hospital prospective payment system outlier threshold for discharges paid the long-term care hospital standard federal payment rate and an alternative methodology that would result in a lower outlier threshold. Separate inpatient prospective payment system payment for establishing and maintaining access to essential medicines. Many hospitals have experienced drug shortages from antibiotics used to treat severe bacterial infections to crash cart drugs necessary to stabilize and resuscitate critically ill adults. Shortages can have profound impacts on the care hospitals are able to provide to their patients, ranging from medication interactions to increased risk of hospital-acquired infections and in-hospital mortality. These impacts result in reduced quality of care and in some instances, increased costs borne by the Medicare program to provide payment for avoidable services had a drug been readily available. It is critical to develop policies that can help curtail shortages of essential medicines and associated impacts. As one part of this initiative, CMS is proposing a separate payment under the inpatient prospective payment system for small independent hospitals to establish and maintain a buffer stock of essential medicines for use during future shortages. These hospitals are particularly vulnerable to supply disruptions during shortages because they lack the resources of hospitals that are larger and or are part of a chain organization. This proposed policy would foster access to a more reliable, resilient supply of these medicines for patients of these hospitals. Request for information on the use of the Medicare inpatient prospective payment system payment rates for maternity care by other payers. CMS is seeking information on differences between hospital resources required to provide inpatient pregnancy and childbirth services to Medicare patients as compared to non-Medicare patients. To the extent that the resources required differ between patient populations, CMS also wishes to gather information on the extent to which non-Medicare payers or other commercial insurers may be using the inpatient prospective payment system as a basis for determining their payment rates for inpatient pregnancy and childbirth services, as well as the effect 
if any, that the use of the inpatient prospective payment system as a basis for determining payment by those payers may have on maternal health outcomes. Additionally, CMS is seeking public comment on potential solutions that can be implemented through the hospital condition of participations to address well-documented concerns regarding maternal morbidity, mortality, disparities, and maternity care access in the United States without exacerbating access to care issues. Specifically, CMS solicits comment on what the overarching requirements and structure should be for a possible future obstetrical services condition of participation. CMS welcomes data, alternatives, benefits, and discussion of possible unintended consequences. Updated labor market areas. The law requires that Medicare adjust its inpatient hospital payment for area differences in the cost of labor an adjustment known as the wage index. CMS is proposing to revise the labor market areas used for the wage index based on the most recent core-based statistical area delineations issued by the Office of Management and Budget based on 2020 census data. Continuation of the low-wage hospital policy. CMS proposes to extend a temporary policy finalized in the fiscal year 2020 inpatient prospective payment system slash long-term care hospital prospective payment system final rule that addresses wage index disparities affecting low wage index hospitals, which includes many rural hospitals. Specifically, CMS is proposing that this policy would be effective for at least three more years beginning in fiscal year 2025. CMS believes it is necessary to wait until the low wage index hospital policy has been in place for a sufficient time period after the end of the COVID-19 public health emergency to evaluate its effects before making any decision to modify or discontinue the policy. The first full fiscal year of wage data after the COVID-19 public health emergency is the fiscal year 2024 wage data, which CMS anticipates will be available for fiscal year 2028 rulemaking. Distribution of GME residency slots under Section 4122 of the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2023. Section 4122 of the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2023 requires the distribution of an additional 200 Medicare-funded residency positions or slots to train physicians. This provision dedicates at least one half of the total number of positions to psychiatry or psychiatry subspecialty residencies. The law requires CMS to notify hospitals receiving residency positions under Section 4122 by January 31, 2026. In order to meet that deadline, CMS is proposing to implement policies that will govern the application and award process in a manner consistent with the statutory requirements. CMS is also proposing to the extent slots are available to focus on health professional shortage areas to help bolster the healthcare workforce in rural and underserved areas. CMS estimates that this additional funding will total approximately $74 million from fiscal year 2026 through fiscal year 2036. Social determinants of health diagnosis codes. Inpatient prospective payment system payment is made based on the use of hospital resources in the treatment of a patient's severity of illness, complexity of service, and or consumption of resources. Generally, a higher severity level designation of a diagnosis code results in a higher payment to reflect the increased hospital resource use. After review of CMS's data analysis of the impact on resource use generated using claims data, CMS is proposing to change the severity designation of the seven ICD-10 CM diagnosis codes that describe inadequate housing and housing instability from non-complication or comorbidity 
to complication or comorbidity based on the higher average resource cost of cases with these diagnosis codes compared to similar cases without these codes. This builds on CMS's policy from last year for diagnosis codes describing homelessness, example unspecified, sheltered, and unsheltered. The proposed policy, if finalized, would more accurately reflect each healthcare encounter for hospitals that take care of persons who have inadequate housing or have housing instability and also improve the reliability and validity of the coded data, including in support of efforts to advance health equity. Changes to new technology add-on payment for fiscal year 2025. New gene therapies hold tremendous promise to cure previously incurable diseases including sickle cell disease. To better promote access to these potentially life-saving therapies and consistent with CMS's Sickle Cell Disease Action Plan, CMS is proposing to increase the new technology add-on payment percentage from 65% to 75% for a gene therapy that is indicated and used specifically for the treatment of sickle cell disease subject to their determination in the fiscal year 2025 inpatient prospective payment system slash long-term care hospital final rule that any applicable gene therapies indicated and used specifically for the treatment of sickle cell disease meets the criteria for approval for new technology add-on payment beginning in fiscal year 2025 and concluding at the end of the two to three year newness period of any such gene therapy. To improve flexibility for applicants for new technology add-on payment, CMS is proposing to use the start of the fiscal year October 1st instead of April 1st to determine whether technology is within its two to three year newness period. This change would be effective starting in fiscal year 2026 for new applicants for new technology add-on payment and when extended NTAP or new technology add-on payment for an additional year for technologies initially approved for NTAP in, F in fiscal year 2025 or subsequent years. Beginning with applications for new technology add-on payment for fiscal year 2026, CMS is proposing to no longer consider an FDA marketing authorization hold status to be an inactive status for the purpose of the new technology add-on payment application eligibility. This is it for today. Now, how the CMS proposed rule for 2025 impacts the quality programs that will be covered in a separate video. So please stay tuned for that video. If you found this information useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching. Bye now.